Let's take a look at some charts from the Yearn Finance article on Brave New Coin. So Yearn is kind of difficult to explain if you're not into the DeFi mix, but essentially what it does is optimize yield farming strategies across the various DeFi platforms, essentially automating which funds go where once they're locked in the Yearn vault. They also have a native governance token, which the creator Andrew Andre Cronge, don't really know how to say his name, Andre, we'll call him Andre, has said himself it is valueless, it should have no value. The issue with that is there are 30,000 of them, which is extremely limited circulating supply. So the individual price reflects the mania, maybe at the time, as it rose from nearly nothing to over $30,000, I think, at one point. So there's really no graphic for Yearn other than, you know, here's the vault. It's kind of simple. You just connect your MetaMask or whatever wallet you may have, and off you go. And if we look at just various yields, you can see it varies between the platforms. ETH, USDC, it's kind of all over the place. DAI, all over the place. And the goal is to maximize your APYs. Total value, USD value locked in Yearn has declined in recent months despite a rise in ETH price, a rise in BTC price. So this isn't underlying asset depreciation. It's people moving coins or money off of Yearn out of the vaults. Part of this is also just DeFi mania waning as well. People cashing in their chips, that sort of thing. I'm super interested in how this will look a, in a year from now, if, it'll, it, if it will even exist, because it came on so strong so quickly that that sort of momentum is difficult to sustain over long periods of time, especially if the DeFi yields continue to decay over the next year. So if the yields stay flat or increase, this year in finance total value lock should increase. If yields drop to next to nothing and you're better off just holding ETH and BTC and anything else, then obviously this is just going to continue to just go to zero because there's no need for it anymore. You know, it's maximizing yield farming efficiencies if there's yields to be farmed, right? So if there's no yields to be farmed, it should continue to decay. If we look at who holds most of the tokens, a lot of it's on Binance and Huobi. Um, I assume these unknown addresses, uh, unknown addresses are either Uniswap or the vault itself. I'm not really sure. I couldn't, couldn't dig into it further as far as what these were. But I have to assume that one of these is the vault. One of these is Uniswap, something like that. Not a lot of token distribution as far as who's holding what amount of, what amount of coin. If we look at transactions per day, the, those have also cooled off. You can see this arcing declining effect over the past few months, which because of the nature of the token, it's hard to say you know, how much of this is speculation, how much of this is people buying and holding, moving it somewhere, voting for various proposals. Average transaction value is also declining. So just a lack of token activity isn't bullish for the token. I don't think it's bullish for the, the vault platform stuff either and i mean all this just everything i look at just tells me that this stuff is on the way down not on the way up which is fine i mean everything has peaks and troughs and it's going to explode and implode and that sort of thing but the on-chain analysis for the token reflects the market cooling off in general and if we look at google trends for DeFi crypto i know this isn't yfi specifically but you can see how that exploded out of nowhere and has dec declined in recent months. Yield farming, Google Trends, very similar, exploded, cooled off. So all that is reflected on the price of the token, which makes sense. This stuff isn't diverging from on-chain metrics or search activity, that sort of thing. We have to look at this on the four hour because there's not really a lot of price history for the token. This goes back to just prior to September. So looking at, at it on the four hour, looking at the 50 and the 200 on the four hour with yearly pivots, VPVR volume and RSI. 
First thing that sticks out to me is obviously this massive VPVR zone. Most of the volume historically has been at this level, both on the way up, at the current level. It's kind of sat here for a month. And it's also got this descending triangle, which is bearish. So I don't expect bullish continuation here. Trend metrics show that this is bearish as well. I do expect 13k to break to the downside. I do expect between 5 and 8.5 as far as the support zone based on the fib extension and measured move of the descending triangle. Something else to contend with is also the previous in uh, previous head and shoulders, which price hasn't yet reached that target. So again, another decent case for 8K. And there's really been no price history, you know, below, below 13 relatively. So it's going to be pretty easy to go go down from here just because there's no there's no support and you know, no one's looking at anything saying there was a wick here there was a lot of volume here there's a lot of action at this area none of that whatsoever so it's hard to be bullish on this until it breaks above the 200 again it's got to break it's got to make a higher high basically in order to be semi-convinced that this has any bullish momentum in it and above 16 to 18 k would be above the 200 it would also be above the cloud. The cloud has been bearish since, on the four hour, since late September. You can see it had this attempt to break up and it had a bearish TK recross. And off she went. Another bearish TK recross. More down. Right now we have another bearish TK recross. And any lower low here is likely not stopping at some random price it's probably just going to push pretty hard there's probably a lot of stop losses at this level or slightly below 13k so you're going to see a bunch of stops get hit price is going to go lower more stops are going to get hit there's going to be panic people holding from 30k plus saying what, what am i doing i thought this was a new paradigm i was completely wrong you know lots of emotion what i want to see on this is just an all-time high in volume would be huge with a break to around 8k because that says people have sufficiently panicked and been washed out that there's really no one else left that's really the goal it's either a slow grind which is a multi-week process in this case or a very quick capitulatory candle wick to around 8k would be my guess when a bunch of people just throw up their hands and say you know what, enough's enough I didn't even cl include the BTC chart because it's pretty obviously bearish, but that would be something else to watch for is how the BTC chart is reacting. So overall, I think the honeymoon is over for yield farming stuff in the moment. doesn't mean it's going to disappear in the long term. You just have to watch if the yields will come back. They obviously weren't sustainable early on. I think everybody knew that. But the question is, what happens now? You know, does this turn into... A dead project over time i doubt it it's got a lot of development and community behind it it's a good idea it has a use case so i don't think this is going to disappear anytime soon it's got a lot of competition most of which is uh, just kind of copying what yearn did so unless someone else does something better i don't expect anything to overtake yfi as far as their foothold on the first mover advantage or anything like that the price looks pretty bearish hard to deny that so in the near term i definitely expect lower lows beyond 13k.